Hello, golf fans, and welcome back to another DFS PGA video. Joining me, as always, another member of our Rotor Pros DFS PGA team, Dane Chenault. How's it going tonight? Going great. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, week for a few weeks now. Um, glad it's here. I think this is a, a big week for us as far as um, we can really help you with strategy. Um, a lot of people, especially with a quick turnaround, a two-day um to prepare for this event uh, starting Wednesday. I think it's a big opportunity to build teams with this correct strategy we're going to talk about um, and really pay off for you this week. Yes, for sure. So I'm just going to jump in here and we're going to take a look at the bracket here real quick. Flip over to the sheet. So this is the setup here we're looking at this week. Um, it is... Give me a second. Sheet view. There we go. Uh, so it's a little bit different um, as than their normal stroke play event. What we're looking to do here, we're we're starting with. We'll go over the structure first of all. So we're we start with 64 players. They're grouped into 16 groups of four here, as you can see. Um, and then what they do over the first three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, each player plays three matches against each of the other three players in that group. Whoever has the best record after that will advance into the round of 16 in all four of these groups here. Um, and then from there, they will be, uh, eight, again, 18 whole match match play, and they'll continue on until they get to the final on Sunday. So the round of 16 will be on Saturday, I believe, and uh, along with the quarterfinals. And then Sunday will be the semifinals in the morning, followed by the finals. Um, so in terms of strategy, I guess the first rule that, we kind of want to discuss with everyone is when you're putting these guys together, you want to get the best chance of getting. So quarterfinals, I kind of look at compare in terms of cash games to say a regular event in the cut line. Um, if you can get all six of your golfers through to the quarterfinals, um, which are the, you got eight spots here. Uh, if you can do that, you're going to be looking pretty good in GPP or cash games, to be honest. Um, so that's the first thing that I'm looking at. The second rule I guess would be, just that you don't ever want to roster two golfers in the same group. Um, that's going to be, you know, counterproductive because only one of them is going to come out after the first three days. Do you have anything there to add to that um, or anything else that you're looking at for strategy this week? No, I think that's, that's exactly right. Um, so I kind of went, like you had mentioned, I went three different levels, I guess I would say um, in some rules that I made to outline when I'm not, when I'm building lineups. And the first one is, is like you said, the groups, not one more out of each four man group. Um, and then this bracket that you have on the sheet uh, will really help. Um, I think being able to get uh, lineups that you have guys moving forward as many as you can, if you can get six out of the final eight uh, in that quarterfinals, I think that's what you need to try to do in as many lineups as you can. Um, I mean, there's a potential that the salary might not work out, um, but I think you need to build lineups to start with um, that are getting as many in the six, um, in that final eight as you can. So the first rule that I have is obviously not, not more than one in a group. And then I had the second rule that I did was nobody that can meet in the round of 16. So if you look at the bracket, you kind of have it marked off there, um, like on the top left, group one and group 16, the winners of each of those groups are going to play each other in the round of 16 and won't be able to move on to the quarterfinals. So you want to not have more than one of those eight guys either. Um, and then you want to have one to two, two max out of each color code that you have here. So um, you don't want more than two coming out of the green um, because more than two can't reach the quarterfinals. Um, I think that's how I'm going to build as many lineups as I can. Um, and then if I build enough, if I do the full 150 this week, um, I'll probably have to back that off some because I, th I don't want exposure to some of these guys. Um, and when you start Xing guys out, it gets kind of tough um, for the salary to work out. So you might have to build some uh, that you don't have all six of eight in the top, in the quarterfinals but i'm going to try to get as many as i can built that way yep i'm i'm with you there that's definitely the first thing to do is really just look at the groups and what i'm going to be doing here like after this video tonight and then into tomorrow 
Um, because another thing here is we lock early. So it's Wednesday morning, uh, very early in the morning we lock. So uh, keep that in mind. It's a day early. We do have another event this week. It's the Corrales Championship. That locks normal times Thursday. It's a stroke play event. I will have a sheet for that. But again, in this video, we're going to concentrate on this just because it is a different structure. And I do feel that there is a lot of edge here. We do see this year in and year out. You go and look at the ownerships, like day one when the event starts. And the, the very first thing that you see, um, you start digging through, is there is a ton of lineups where people um, are either using multiple players in the same group or you know maybe three people from the same quadrant. Well, that, that's just never going to win a GPP mathematically. It's just not possible. Um, you, you can definitely go with what we talked about just earlier and that not work out just by not picking the right golfers. But if you're not looking at it from a perspective of trying to get, uh, like we said, six, all six of your golfers into the quarterfinals and having, you know, that's and followed by those easy one to three rules that we talked about, you're, you're going to be successful. Um, the next thing that I'm doing is kind of looking at each and every group and trying to, or even let's say quadrants, each and every quadrant and trying to find like the ones I'm most confident in. Um, and I'll use that as a core. So if I'm doing 20 max, I will lock those two players in the quarterfinals and just leave them there in like say 10 lineups. And then my second, um, my second most confident quadrant, I'll go in and I'll maybe use five lineups with, with two guys getting to the quarterfinal, five more lineups with two other guys going to the quarterfinal. Then there's going to be, you know, the ones where I think there's a lot of variance who can come out of them. I will just kind of mix and match those guys. I built a few lineups coming into this uh, video tonight and generally what I've got, and, you know, I tried to put a few things together, but I really like, I've got two guys in the nine K range, two guys in the eight K range and two in the six. Now my two guys in the six K range could be, lower end 7k guys because my 9k guys are kind of that mid to high 9k um but that's generally how i'm going about my construction so far um so what i did and what i will be doing here is making multiple copies of this bracket tab on the sheet and then just building these brackets out um so what i'm going to do i like dustin johnson so i'm going to oops clicked it in the wrong slot there um, and just go put him here. Uh, I like Paul Casey as well. So I'll go put him there and I'll just start filling in the bracket um, all the way through and then I'll start building. Um, I might have to go back and readjust things because like you said, uh, the price isn't always gonna work out, especially if you're not gonna be mixing in these six and seven K guys. But looking at some of this course history here, that's one other thing I want to get into before I turn it over to you and look at um, some of your favorite picks i'm just gonna move this picture of us out of the way here is a lot of variance in terms of finish here like we see dustin johnson he made it to the semifinals sorry quarterfinals in 2016 he won it in 2017 and he didn't make it out of the group stage the last two years just been terribly we see that with a lot of guys that it's really up and down so don't don't be afraid to take chances with some of these guys just because you're maybe scared of they're in a group with, say, Rory McIlroy or DJ or Justin Thomas. Don't be afraid to go ahead and take those chances. In terms of course history, the reason I've only got four years of this event on the sheet this week is just simply because uh, this event has been played at Austin Country Club for just four years. Um, it's a Pete Dye course, uh, so we're going to take that into account when we start getting into our picks here as you can see on the main tab of the sheet i've split all the golfers up into groups and then we've got the bracket tab down here below so you kind of got both to play with here this week with that said dane um what i guess let's do you want to go just go through group by group and talk about uh maybe one guy that you're targeting the other guy maybe one or two guys that you're looking at a couple of your favorites yeah yeah all right for sure i'll let you uh jump in first and then i'll just kind of respond to that and jump into the next one after that yeah, so I'm just looking at, at the bracket on your sh uh, on the sheet here, and we can start in group one. Um, Dustin Johnson looks like he gets a pretty good group here. Um, Kevin Na has been good in match play. Really, those two are the only guys that I would want exposure to, even if I'm building 150 this week. Um, I do want quite a bit of DJ. Um, I think he has a pretty good path to get to the quarterfinals. Um, and then a sprinkle of Kevin Na for me in, in group one. I'm 100% on board with you. I think DJ is by far the favorite here. Um, he's won here before. He's been good on, on Pete Dye courses. Uh, he, he's been pretty good coming in lately as well. Uh, Kevin Na would be like the bracket buster. 
you know, I'll bet you a large percentage are going to come in and dust it out of that group. So going with Kevin Knott, 7,100, and going with maybe another top tier like uh, Bryson, uh, who are the other top guys here? Morikawa is 10, 10K plus, John Rahm, uh, Xander, because we're not going to be able to get them all. So some of them are going to be very low owned. So out of these top tier 10K plus guys, I think DJ, maybe Justin Thomas, will get to group two here in a second. I'll jump in. Uh, I think that just kind of leads us over there. Justin Thomas, I think, is going to take on some ownership. He's 300 bucks cheaper than DJ. He's had some success here as well, but this is pretty much the group of death. Uh, Louis Oosthuizen, Kevin Kistner, and Matt Kutcher. I'll go back to the main tab of the sheet here. We'll just look at this. Uh, Oosthuizen has made it through back-to-back years. He's made it through the group stage. Kutcher's made it through in three of the last four. Uh, Kistner won last year. He was back-to-back, or sorry, he was runner-up in 2018 to Bubba. And then you look at Justin Thomas. He ha- He's probably got, yeah, he's got the worst course history here over those four years that they played at this event here. But he made it to the semifinals in 2018 there as well. And I believe he went 3-0 and in his stage uh, or in his group stage that year as well. Looked pretty darn good. And he's coming off a win. So I think uh, him and DJ in these groups one and two, are uh, those are definitely going to be the highest owned guys. But this is the group, group two, where I'm going to take a lot of shots. This is this quadrant up here. Uh, go back to the bracket, the purple quadrant. I'm calling it uh, quadrant three in all my articles and stuff like that. But this is the one, this group two, that is like the least predictable for me. I think Thomas will be the highest owned, but Kistner at 7,600 and his performance here at this event, this is a good uh, course. I don't think we're going to see a lot of guys, you know, being able to use that distance. So I think it kind of takes away from like a Bryson, but guys like Kistner, um, who else has been good at these Pete Dye tracks? Patrick Cantley, uh, Webb Simpson, uh, kind of the precision courses like that. So I think Kistner's a good play in here too, but I mean, we got Kutcher at sub 7K and I'm trying to target three guys under sub 7K this week that I'm going to mix into my GPP lineup so that I can fit uh, two guys in the 9K, uh, two guys in the 8K range. And Kutcher's definitely going to be one of those guys. And then I, I don't know about you, but I think Us. Usti is going to be like one of the lowest owned guys in this group too. What are your thoughts on this group? Yeah, um, quite a quite a plethora of um, great match play players yeah. here. Um, Justin Thomas has, has got out of his group quite a few times. Um, so yeah, I like Justin Thomas obviously, um, but then Kisner would be second for me in this group. He just really loves this place. Um, he's not in particularly great form, but. Um, I think just this kind of format, it just seems every time we come around here, um, 2018, I mean, he was runner up to, to Bubba Watson and then one in 19. Um, so I think Kisner would be second for me out of this group. Um, Ustazen would be third. And I think I'm going to fade Kucher just because I like the other three so much in this group. Um, I could see all three of them coming out. Um, and I just don't like where Kucher's game is at. Um, and he gets a tough draw Wednesday. He's going up against JT. Um, first first match out, I believe. So um, I'll, I'll take a little bit of the first three um, in that group, um, but fade Kucher. Yeah, that first match could, you know, decide a lot of people's brackets right, yeah. uh, <laughs> right off the first match. So that'll be – there's definitely a lot of good ones. I don't have that schedule up in front of me. I'll try and get that loaded here. We'll discuss that a little more could be very exciting um but yeah, i done... believe the the highest seed plays the fourth seed on starting wednesday and then the middle two play each other but i'm not sure what happens thursday and friday so. okay right on um so moving on i guess next before i jump into group three i want to talk my model and what i'm looking at this week i'm keeping it pretty simple and looking at ball striking like i said this is a Pete Dye course here. So I've got approach a little more than off the tee. Um, got some long iron distances just because the guys are going to be, I think, fairly careful off the tee just because there is a lot of danger. There's water in play on seven holes. Uh, we've got smaller fairways, kind of similar to what we see at the players, or, or sorry, smaller greens right around that 5,500 average square feet. Um, so similar to the players with the, the small, small green areas, but it is small fairways as well. So I think precision off the tee and then uh, approach shot is very high for me this week. And then, of course, birdie or better percentage. And then I'm looking at some uh, match play stuff. And I'm, I'm looking at just not 
just here over the last four years, but overall. So one thing I wanted to give a shout out to tap it in on Twitter here, move us out of the way. He, oh, it's not coming up. There we go. So I was searching today and looking for match play records. Uh, he's got Ryder Cup in here, President's Cup. Go check it out on Twitter at tap it in three. Uh, he's got every player in the field and their records in all of those events. So definitely go check that out. That's something I'm looking at just to kind of not as, you know, I'm looking at this event for sure, but I'm I definitely looking at that just to kind of, you know, if it's player A versus player B final decision type thing, that's something I'll definitely look at. So going into group three here, we've got John Rahm, Shane Lowry, Ryan Palmer, and Sebastian Munoz. Uh, I believe Rom's going to be definite chalk here. Personally, this, the guy I like second out of this group would be Ryan Palmer, and I'm not really considering the other two. Uh, I think Lowry will get some ownership here too. What are you thinking in this group? Yeah, um, tough group for me. Um, Rom is clear and above the rest, and, and I think Palmer's number two. So I'm right in line with you, and it's one of those that I'm not – happy to take a, a stand on any of the value guys. So um, I'll definitely have some of Rom, um, but I'm probably not going to have a ton of Palmer or Lowry. I'm with you there. Palmer was just kind of one of those. Uh, I'm not fully confident in Rom. Um, I just wanted to check on his record here. I was looking at, so over on the course history here this week, I've got where they finished. So everything ninth and better. Uh, means they got into the quarterfinals or into the round of 16, sorry. Um, so everyone in here up made it into the round of 16. Um, and then I've also got their group record as well, if you wanted to check that out. So I was just going to search ROM. So yeah, he was 1-1-1 one, one, and one last year. In 2017, he was 3-0. and oh, That's why he lost to DJ in the final. Um, but his last two years, it's just been rough for him. He's got a 1-3-2 and two record here. So I just not totally confident in him. So Palmer was more of just a, like a pivot off, I guess, and another way to get some value to go up and pay up for some other guys. But none of this is finalized. This is just kind of my first look as I was putting things together today. So over in group four, um, I think I know who your favorite is. I'll let you talk about probably top two, top three best iron players in the world. Yeah, Morikawa. Um, the only thing, he's definitely my favorite here, but the only thing that worries me is, is his putting. I think... That does leave him a bit vulnerable um, in this type of field, but if he gets on one of those rolls that he's just um, peppering the, the flags, it is going to be intimidating to these guys when they're having to to play with that all day. But the putting, if, if it gets going wrong and he gets on a stretch of four or five holes that he can't – he's missing greens and he can't get up and down, I could see him definitely losing um, in this group. And if I, if I do fade him – um, and I will, obviously, in quite a few lineups. Um, Max Homa is going to be uh, the second guy for me. Um, I just like the way that his form is coming in. He doesn't start with Morikawa. If he can pick up one over Horschel, um, I think he goes into the last couple days um, with some confidence as well. Horschel would be third probably for me, and I don't think I'll have any of JT posting, but – um, Homa, definitely number two if you want to fade Morikawa, um, but I still do like Morikawa quite a bit. Well, I know we're not into group 13 yet, but I'm really hoping down here in this quadrant that we see a round of 16 match between Hovland and Morikawa. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Um, Hovland's one of my favorites. We'll talk about him in a bit, but Morikawa is definitely my favorite in this range. I think he can do well, but I'm with you. We need to find value somewhere, and I think this is a good range. I'm with you on Max Homa. Um, the ball striking has been pretty good lately. He isn't losing a lot of strokes when he is, and he's gained strokes on approach. Uh, we got at five of his last seven, and when that putter gets hot, uh, he can definitely you know, push his way, not even through. And these guys in the mid-seven and in the 6K range, just getting them through into the round of 16 I think is good for those guys because generally we're only going to have like Two in our builds. Um, oh, looks like we lost Dane here. Just give me a second. I will just reconnect Dane.
There he is. Can Bye. still hear you? Yeah. Right on. Okay, so I'm just going to share the screen here again. It's probably my internet. That's what I'm blaming it on. <laughs> okay. So we were down in this Morikawa range. Uh, I was talking about mid-7K guys um, and 6K guys. I think because of, you know, how many higher-end 9K plus guys that we're going to want, I think, you know, just getting through the round of 16 is going to be enough for them. Uh, do you agree with those guys? And I think Homa has that upside that he could get through to the quarterfinals as well and, you know, push into the semis possibly. But uh, I think that's a good – that is a really good place in Group 4 to go and grab some value. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, so moving on to Group 5, we've got Bryson. So this – I'm fading Bryson personally. Um, he hasn't been – he's won 3-1 and one in overall – you know, looking at that Twitter list of match play records, he was, I believe, one, two, one and two last year. I'll just jump over here. I want to look at that. He was down. What do we got? Bryson. One and two last year. Um, finished in that T4. He didn't make it out of the group range, but that's one place I am probably fading as well. I love Siwoo Kim. This is a place where I'm going to take, but I'm playing GPP only this week. Siwoo Kim's on my list. He's awesome on these Pete Dye courses. Uh, if we go over and look at him in group five over here, he made it through the group stage here last year after not doing that in 2017. Oh, sorry. I need to scroll over a little bit. That was 2018 where he did that. Um, he, he did pretty terrible here last year, but uh, just the overall value. This is another spot I'll mix in. I don't think I'll have any Bryson to be honest for the whole entire thing. And Siwoo is pretty much the only direction I'm going just because I, I mentioned earlier, I like Hovland so much coming out of this quadrant. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, that's kind of crazy. We agree on Siwoo Kim. Uh, I didn't <laughs> expect you to like him that much, but I really do like Siwoo. Um, I like kind of the draw for him. Tommy Fleetwood has, has been decent, but he's not been good off the tee. And um, Siwoo, his iron game was on, on point at TPC Sawgrass. So um, kind of found some of that for me. 7,300. I think that's a very nice price. Um, and I don't think he'll be super owned either, especially in a group with Bryson and Tommy Fleetwood, who are always popular guys. So um, Siwoo would be my favorite. I do think I'll have a, a smidge of, of Bryson um, and then make, and then even less of Fleetwood, uh, and I'll be fading Rosner. Nice. I like that. I guess I, I, at 7,800 Fleetwood, I'll probably mix him in as well, but it, it's just him and Siwoo for me. Um, uh, if I've made 10, if I'm, Going with 10 lineups of guys built out of that group, it'd be like eight Siwoo and two Tommy Fleetwood, I would say. And again, he's another guy. If, if maybe not Tommy Fleetwood, I want him going a little bit farther at 7,800. But for 73, Siwoo, um, I'm fine with him getting through to the round of 16. I think he's got a chance to even get to the quarterfinals. He's another value guy, I think, has upside because of what you said, the form um, plus the Pete Dye stuff as well. And he's had success here um, as well. So, I could see that happening for sure. Uh, going over to group six, this was a tough one for me. I am, I, it's really tough, to be honest. Yeah, I, I'm either punting Andy Sullivan um, or going with Scotty Scheffler, just because I've already got the guys kind of pinned out that I'm paying up for, and Xander isn't one of them. Yeah, Xander is, is not one of them for me either, but my favorite guy in this group, at least, is Jason Day, um, 8,400. Um, I think he, his match play, I, I just love the way that he plays. Again, kind of like Kisner, he's had great success in match play. Um, starts with Scheffler um, on Wednesday. Uh, I like Scheffler as well, 7,900. Those are my, are my top two in this group. Um, and then I don't – I think I'll be fading Xander um, personally. Um, Sullivan, you could definitely take a shot on him if he knocks off Xander the first day. Um he could surprise for sure. Um, but that's where I'm at. Jason Day is my favorite in this group. Um, the thing that I do have to think about, though, is there's a guy that I really like paying up for in Group 11 um, that we'll get to in a bit. So um, I don't know how much of this group I'll actually end up with. That's where I am with Group 6 as well. It's I'm going to mix in a little bit of Scotty Scheffler just for my 7K range ex exposure. 
But other than yeah. uh, maybe punt, you know, if I'm doing a 20 match, maybe one, maybe two with Andy Sullivan, just in hopes that he gets through to the round of 16. Um, and, and Xander possibly takes on some ownership and Jason Day as well, because he's only 8,400. Uh, that's a nice mid tier or mid 8K price tag. He's just been so up and down with the putter. He's just one. Again, I just don't really like this range uh, or this range, this group really at all. Going into group seven, this is back into that uh, purple quadrant, quadrant three here. Uh, <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite for the whole thing, I'm betting him outright for this event is Patrick Reed. He just seems so clutch and just has that killer instinct when it comes to this match play stuff. So he just, he, I don't know if he gets in players' heads or if nothing really gets in his head or what it is, but he's just been so good. Uh, at these, he's made it. What do we got here? I'm just going to flip over to the other sheet and look at his. He's made it through the group stage in two of his you know, the four years here, which doesn't seem great, but both of those years he was 3-0 and in the group stage, or yeah, in the group stage to get through to that round of 16. So he was pretty dominant. Bubba won it in 2018, so I think he's going to take on some ownership. I can see even see ownership going to your boy here, uh, Joaquin Neiman. Um, but how are you kind of playing this one out? Cause I think I'm only going to have exposure to Reed out of this group. Uh, this is a tough one for me. Cause I think Reed, I, I really like Reed as well. I'll have quite a bit of him, but I think he got a, a tough draw overall. Uh, mm -hmm. Neiman's just playing very well. Um, Bubba loves this place, even though he's not playing very well, I would have the least exposure of this group to him. Um, even though he could, he could come around and, and break this, uh, group right open but the Zayden who um he, that putter for him if it gets hot and he could take out Neiman in, in day one he could be right there I think but I think it's a tough group but Reed should come out I believe just because of his match play history like you talked about uh, so 9600 would be my favorite and then I don't know it's it's kind of a toss-up um, between Neiman as number two and the Zayden at 7600. Nice. Um, yeah, the the price in there, like mid 7K is the lowest guy in that group. That's just, and then not only is that a tough group, but group 10 right above is also difficult if Reed gets out of that group. Uh, we'll talk about that one coming up. We'll jump over to group eight here. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton, Lee Westwood, Sergio Garcia, and Matt Wallace. I only like two guys here. I know Westwood's kind of, I like the price under 8K, but I'm looking at Sergio Garcia as my top guy, and then Tyrrell Hatton would be my second. But again, I'm going to have a little bit lower exposure to this group because Group 9, which we'll talk about next. I'm, let's just group both of these groups together so we can talk about this quadrant. These ones are kind of nice because they're grouped uh, side by side. So it, in Group 9, we have Webb, uh, Paul Casey, Hughes, and Gooch. I think that one comes down to Casey and Webb. And then in Group 8, I like Hatton and Garcia. But if I look at that and kind of draw this out, I, I have Casey and Garcia coming out of those two groups, and then I've got Casey uh, coming out of those guys, um, as I just put in there. So how do you kind of got that group eight and nine playing out? Yeah, eight, I see a complete toss-up in Hatton and Sergio. Um, I, I think I would give right edge to, to Hatton, but Sergio is playing pretty well. Um I just kind of like the way Hatton grinds it out, um, especially in, in this type of event. I think that suits him. Um, group nine as well. Casey is definitely my favorite there. I don't. I might just completely fade the rest of the group um, and take a stand in that group because I like Casey so much. So um, those are the three in those two groups that I'll have um, quite a bit of exposure to. Oh, that's that's a good point. I think Webb Simpson is the top three. At 9,100, he loves Pete Dye courses. He's got like three wins on Pete Dye courses. He struggled at this event specifically at this course, but um, I think at 9,100 with that experience, uh, he loves these, you know, precision type tracks out here. So I think at 9,100, he's going to be a top three highest owned player in this whole thing, uh, top five at least. So I, I do like that fade as well, just outright completely. If he doesn't come out of there, you're probably going to be, you know, ahead of 20, 25% of your GPP, uh, people in your GPP. So I definitely like taking that chance uh, and going with Paul Casey there. He's got a, a good track record, 37, 26 and five, 54% winning percentage. looking at his match play record. So that's been good there as well. Um, 
I'm not really looking at anyone else in that group either. I think uh, we kind of nailed down that group with Casey and then a mix of Sergio and Hatton. Um, you know, if do you see either of them beating Casey or do you maybe have Casey coming out all the way into the quarterfinals, maybe possibly having uh, Dustin Johnson? That seems it's either going to be Webb Simpson and Dustin Johnson, I think, or possibly even Casey or Dustin Johnson are going to be like your chalk top left quadrant. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a pretty tough for me um, with those three. Um, remember it, when I say I like those three, I'm not putting any more than one in, in my, in one lineup. In particularly. One build, yeah. So I'll have quite a bit of exposure to those three, but none in the same lineup. So I'll have maybe even because I like all three of those guys um, and they're very similar 83 to 8,900 price. So um, I like one of those three um, in quite a few lineups for sure um, to get to probably meet DJ. Obviously, it could be some kind of upset. But. Yeah, for sure. And then group 10 jumps us back over uh, right above the Patrick Reed there. This is just this purple group um, is probably my least predictable group. Who's going to come out like into the quarterfinals, into the semifinals. So when I'm mixing in my lineups here, all of this, like group two, not group 15 as much, but uh, group two, 10 and seven, uh, I, I can see a lot of different combinations coming out of that. So I'm going to definitely mix that one up and not, I'm not really sold on anyone as of right now in this group 10. I like Cantley. He's got the, the Pete Dye stuff going for him as well. Matt Yama struggled here a bit. Uh, Brian Harmon had some success here. Let's go back and check that. What year was that? That was 2018. So they didn't play in 2020, so this would be two events ago. Two, uh, it was his only trip here. He made it out of group stage, didn't get any farther, but he's the only one that has made it out of the group stage here at Austin. I don't know if that's going to get him some ownership uh, if people are just looking at that alone, but I think Cantley is pretty much the overwhelming chalk in this group. Yeah, um, he's he's my favorite in the group. Um, like we you talked about, though, Reed is definitely my favorite in that this little – eight man section here yep. to get to the quarterfinals. So I'll have much more read than I would Cantley. Um, second for me would be um, Harmon at 7,200. I like the way he's playing. I like just the way that his game sets up for match play too. And we've seen him have success here. So he's definitely the second guy for me. Um, Matt Sayama, I, I don't know. I could see any of these four though winning, but definitely Cantley and Harmon would be, uh, the top two. Yeah. And back to kind of the strategy stuff. I'm just kind of going to touch on this as it comes up during the show. Um, this is, that's a good point of not taking, you know, more than two guys out of a quadrant, like you had mentioned and not taking two or sorry. Yeah. Out of a quadrant, but like this group in 10 and seven, if you're building a lineup, you're not going to want to put Cantley and Reed together. Um, if both get a, the, at their prices, they both need to get more than out of the round of 16. If you're oh, picking yeah. Cantley or Reed, you need them to get to at least the quarterfinals versus someone else or into the semifinals. But, you know, you need six golfers. And if you're looking at the semifinals, there's only four spots. That means when you're mixing in your value guys, I don't mind at all mixing like a Cantley um, going down to like the mid 7K range if you like Bubba or whatever, or like a Patrick Reed. And if you're going to go with Brian Harmon, um, I don't mind mixing them together out of there. If you're going to do that, make sure one's just a value guy and that to hit value, he doesn't necessarily need um, to get out of the round of 16. But you, you really got to make sure that when you're building your lines, that the most important thing is just follow along with the bracket. And like I said, I'm going to be building out probably, you know, copying of probably five, six tabs and just building out different scenarios. And that's how I'm going to then go ahead and build my lineups, looking at the different scenarios that are possible. Just having that in view. Uh, really helps and saves a bunch of time flipping back and forth uh, to the bracket, say on like PGA Tour site or whatever you're doing. So that takes us into group 11 here. I got to find it. Oh, I'm going to let you just run off on group 11 because I think one of your favorite golfers of the week is down here. Yeah, um, Rory McIlroy is going to be one of the um, – I'm going to jump right back in on him, 10-2. Uh, um, love his the way his game sets up for match play. He's gonna. It's gonna be similar reason to why I say that as to one of my other favorite and maybe my favorite play of, of the week when we get into one of these higher groups. 
um, is because they have blow up potential, but that really doesn't hurt you in match play. I mean, you could lose a hole, a one hole, um, making an, an eight or something, a seven or eight, maybe, or a double or triple. Mm-hmm. It's not going to kill you. It's, it counts as a lost hole. Uh, they yep. can come right back on the next hole and make an eagle, uh, which they do quite a few times. Um, so I, I really like Rory. He gets a, a heck of a matchup Wednesday against Poulter. Um, what a, You couldn't ask for more with Poulter against Rory to start the week on Wednesday. That's um, as good as it gets. Um, Poulter would be number two for me in this group, um, which is – interesting for sure because they're playing each other the first day so i'll be watching that i will definitely have some um but like i said i like this those two in this group i think a little more than i like group six so um those three out of that little eight man um group if you lump that together i would have exposure to day rory um Poulter, and then I will sprinkle in a little bit of Lanto Griffin just because he's 6,900 as well. Um, And like you mentioned, I'm going to build as many lineups as I can to get six out of that last eight. But exactly like what you were saying in a perfect example, you said you might play a little bit of Andy Sullivan. I could see playing him with like a Rory um, because Andy Sullivan at 6K, you're just hoping that he gets out of his group if he plays Rory fine. You just hope that the salaries don't work out um, and that you can't get six or something out of Mm -hmm. the final eight. If that happens and you get Andy Sullivan to the round of 16, then you're perfectly fine um, playing that. Um, It's just kind of not one of the ones that I'll be building first, but if you go there and kind of later on when you've built tons of lineups or something, um, the way to get six in the final eight, then you back off the rule a little bit and take Andy Sullivan and like a Rory. Um, I could see definitely doing that. Yeah. When it comes to, I I love that strategy call uh, with Sullivan and Rory. Rory would be my favorite overall. Um, I'm pretty, it's pretty close though with Poulter. I like him at 6,700. He's just been a beast when in terms of match play, I think looking at Ryder cup, and I know some of it is team stuff and, you know, different structures, but anyone that's played at least 15 Ryder cup matches, he is the best 72%, 72.2 or something winning or winning percentage of anyone that's played 15 matches ever. Uh, so he is just clutch in terms of the uh, match play stuff. So I like him at 6,700. He is one of my guys with Matt Kutcher down here in this range that I will be mixing in. Uh, to my lineups when I'm fading guys in that same quadrant as well. So that's when I'm going to turn to those value guys is when I'm fading Rory, I'll have Poulter. And when I don't have Poulter, I'll probably have Rory. And uh, and then if not, then Scheffler. So I'm just, I like the way you grouped group six and 11 together. I think that makes a lot of sense to even take those eight players in each one of those groups, if you want to go break it down even further and just kind of rank one, two, three. I don't think you should go any further than one, two, three. You don't want 50% of each one. I would go three in each and just see which ones are easiest to narrow all of them down to. And then, uh, you know, have your most exposure to your most confidence, obviously, of who you think is going to get through quarters, semis, um, who has the best path for you, um, you know, kind of in your head and just go with that. But just make sure, like we said, with the rules that we discussed earlier. Um, In terms of scoring, one thing we didn't discuss yet. So winning a hole, you get three points. Having a hole, you get 0.75. A hole lost, you lose 0.75. A hole not played is 1.6. And what that means is uh, if a guy wins four and three, that means he's up four with three to go. Um, so he'll get all of his points for all the holes he won, plus he will get uh, three times 1.6. So three holes not played times 1.6 is how that works because a match can end early if a guy's up so many strokes, if you're new to match play. And then a match one is five points, a match halved, because you can tie, is two points. And then we've got streak of three consecutive holes. One is five points. So that's like your three birdie streak, but three holes in a row, and you can only have one of those per round. And then if you don't lose a hole throughout your whole match, you get a bonus of seven and a half. So that's kind of how the scoring goes. So keep that in mind um, that we're not looking at birdies, I guess. We're looking, uh, obviously, birdies are going to be – correlated to winning of course but we're looking for holes one and ending the match early is is big too because you're going to get three 1.6 points for each one of those holes that he doesn't finish 
So if we jump over and look at, uh, where do we go? We got 11, so we're jumping up into number 12 now. Got to find it on the sheet here. So Tony Finau, Jason Kokrak, Will Zalatoris, who totally, completely let us down last week. I had some killer lineups. Oh, him and Fratelli. Uh, a couple <laughs> guys that have let us down lately. So right away, I don't like either of those guys. <laughs> I think Finau's the chalk in this range, but I personally like Jason Kokrak down here. I like his, uh, you know, his off the tee game um, and his mid seven K price tag. To be honest, that's a guy I'll take a shot with. And at mid seven K, if I can get him through to the quarterfinals, um, you know, even Siwoo versus versus Kokrak, getting both of those guys in the mid seven K range through to the round of sixteen, and only one of them comes out, I think that's a path that could work. Um, so that's kind of the way I'm looking at that group five and twelve together. Yeah, um, I guess I'm a glutton for punishment um, because <laughs> Zalatoris is, is my favorite in this range. Um, Finau is fine. I'll, I'll definitely have a little bit of exposure um, because he is in the low nines. And if he was upper nines or 10 or something, I would not have exposure. Um, so Zalatoris would be my favorite, then Finau. And then I'm definitely glutton for some Dylan Fratelli, uh, 6,500. I think I can take another shot on him uh, this week, just a sprinkle. Um, he does have some Texas ties, so maybe he could surprise. I don't know, but he's not my favorite. He he would rank third for me in this group, and then Kokrak is actually the way I would go. I could see all four of these guys winning this group. So I, I will probably have exposure to all of them, and that will give me a lot of exposure to these 5 and 12 group because I really like Siwoo, um, and then – like I said, I'll probably sprinkle all four of these guys, and I won't take a stand on this group in particular um, because I don't have a strong lean either way. Awesome. Yeah, that's I, I think I'll have the most exposure to Kokrak out of this just simply because of uh, the price tag, and I really like Siwoo. So I'm just kind of in that mid-7K range down here. But now we'll jump down to group 13. Victor Hovland's my favorite play this week. I don't think he's going to be overly owned either because Abraham answers here at 7,700. I think that's a great price for him. I'm not on the other two guys in the 6K range down here, Weisberger and Streelman at all. Um, I'm not on JT uh, Poston down there. We talked about Homa. I'm not on Billy Horschel. Uh, so for me, it is Victor Hovland. I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him in this group. I might even just have 100% out of there. Or it's going to be a similar situation to where I would have, I forget which one I was talking about. Oh, like Sergio and Hatton, where I'd have maybe like uh, out of 10 lineups out of this group, I'd have eight Hovland and maybe two answer. Uh, Hovland doesn't have any PGA Tour match play experience yet, but he won the U.S. Amateur, I think that was 2018, I want to say, in at Pebble Beach, dominant fashion. Uh, just looking at his playoff rounds, he was he won seven and six, which means he was seven up with six to play that one ended real early then he went into the semifinals he only won three and two but in the finals he dominated six and five so he's been really good lately as well so he's got some good form he obviously not the last two but overall looking at let's say the last 24 rounds this season in general the top fives um he's got the win he's definitely popping in all my models in that 9400 price tag he is one of the guys i'll be heavily exposed to in that 9k range Yep, absolutely love Hovland this week. Um, I don't see – I mean, he could – answer could definitely beat him. I, th I like him by far the most, though, in this group, and I like him by far the most out of this eight-man group down here as far as going to the, the quarterfinals. like him more than Morikawa, like him more than Horschel, Homa, everybody in this group. I, I really like Hovland. I think he can definitely get to that final eight. Um I will have a sprinkle of answer, but be fading the other two for sure. Um, like you said, Hovland won the U.S. Amateur. Um, what else can you say? He's one of my favorite of the week as well, 9,400. Yep, I'm just waiting for that Hovland versus Morikawa on Saturday morning. That'll, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll be waking up for that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the – that once you get to the weekend, this is one of the best sweats too. If, if you can um, – I was lucky enough to get one team that had six of six a couple years ago since, I mean, this was canceled last year, which sucked, but um, I had one six of six and it was, it's so awesome because in the morning they go off super early, um, the round of 16, and then they come back 
like right after that and play the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. And it's and the same on Sunday. I know it's not not many matches on Sunday, so um, it see more shots. Slower, <laughs> it feels like yeah, um, it is absolutely an awesome sweat on Saturday. Um, but we can jump right into the round or the the, the group fourteen. Um, I have no lean in this group, honestly. It is a, a toss up, and I'm having a having trouble with this group three, group fourteen matchup. Really, in round of sixteen, um, I think honestly my favorite here is Todd. I mean, there are just so many question marks with Berger and English. I think they've both withdrawn pretty recently, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of value in this uh, in this group because Berger is 9K and then English is 73, but uh, I don't know. This is tough. I might actually just have um, a little bit of Todd um, and then obviously have a little bit of Rom, um, but this might be one of the, the little uh, mini quadrants that I don't have a ton of exposure to because I like Rory so much. Um I might end up only having one out of this quadrant down here um, and leaving my exposure to two people in a quadrant to somewhere else. I don't have a lean in here. Do you? I'm leaning Berger. Um, He's the only one I'm really looking at in this range, actually. Uh, I was thinking about Todd. Couldn't do it. Uh, I won't have a lot of exposure, like you said, down here in this range. It's more like a GPP pivot because I think Berger is going to be fairly low on because we've got Hovland. We've got uh, who else is kind of in that 9K range? We've got Webb Simpson, Casey's 8,900, Sung Jay's 88, which I don't think he's going to get a lot of exposure because he's kind of up there in that quadrant with Dustin Johnson. Um, but who else do we got in the 9K range? We've got a bunch of guys Fitzpatrick, Cantley, Reed. Berger's going to be very low owned. So if you are fading Cantley or Reed up here, say in group 10 or 7, kind of on this side of the bracket, I think a good pivot is Daniel Berger down here, even if you're fading Rom. Rom, Reed, Cantley, and go with Berger, and you get Berger out to the semifinals. I think you are in great position to uh, take something down. So that's another thing I wanted to run by you here. If you're paying up for your guys, are you paying up for two guys in the same quadrant? I know we talked about the same little group in here, but uh, let's just say I'm going to just copy and paste like Rory getting out and winning to the group of 16 and then to the quarterfinals, and then let's say Rom gets out there so a rory versus rom quarterfinals is that something you think can be optimal um to get you to the you know the top end of a gpp i think in cash games it could definitely work out if if you want to go that way but generally i'm trying to keep my highest guys that i'm paying up for like on opposite sides of the board is that something you're looking at or would you go any lineups with rory rom or say like justin thomas and cantley or you know similar like that I think um, I would definitely want to limit it, but I don't see a problem with it just because, I mean, if you get six in the last eight, any any direction, I think you're going to be good, which is what, you're, what I'm shooting for. I don't really care about the lineups that end up uh, not getting six of the last eight. I yeah. know I'm probably not going to have one that gets six of the last eight, but it's, <laughs> it's very tough to do. I, I, we're making it kind of sound, I think, like it's, fairly easy but it is very tough to get it six out of these last eight um so i'm fine paying up for two in the same quadrant yeah okay no that sounds good yeah it is very tough because you i mean you got not only do you have to pick one golfer out of every you know out of every group to get through to the round of 16 when you're looking at it from a bracket style if you're just playing the bracket it's tough um to get your guys down and get you know if you're looking at quarterfinals, just getting six right into the quarterfinals and, you know, three out of four in the semifinals is tough. Then we're throwing DFS in there where you got to put six guys together in a lineup, make sure that they're not coming from the same group, make sure they're not coming from the same quadrant. And then you throw that salary cap in there as well. That just makes it even tougher. So just starting out with the simple, simple rules is, is really the biggest thing. We're going to hammer this away all the way until lineups lock on first thing, Wednesday morning, um, Tuesday night, I'm not going to be up first thing Wednesday morning. I'll tell you that with this time change lately, but uh, we're just going to hammer those rules home to you um, not to play two guys in the same group and just really build out your brackets and see how it plays out. I've got salary on here. um, Something I was going to do. I'm it's going to take too much time now, but I was going to put it through so that 
when you manually go through here and move your guys through the bracket, it'll bring up prices and what the combined prices would be. This is something I'll look into for next year, Dane. I like it. I like it. So we got two more groups to go through. Group 15 is kind of intriguing for me. I think it's going to be a low-owned group just because of the group of death and looking at Cantley Reed groups down here, 7 and 10 as well. 15, I think, is going to be the lowest-owned group of these four, uh, which makes it a nice pivot spot again. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick's my favorite at 8,700. Again, he's in that price range with Cantley Reed. Um, we talked about these guys down below. Berger has a nice pivot as well, but Hovland's in that range. So he's my favorite. He's another GPP pivot. I'm not going to have a whole bunch of exposure, but I like that. And then Connors would be number two for me. Uh, just that ball striking. Uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know what to think of Spieth here, honestly, at this event. What are, what are you thinking? This is like his hometown, is it not? Yep. Um... You just got me way more excited for this event than I could already be um, by just saying what you just said about this group. Low owned Jordan Spieth, favorite play of the week for me, oh. 9,300. Um, I love the way he – obviously that he's playing. I mm -hmm. love the way that his game sets up for match play, exactly what I was talking about with Rory. He can have those doubles and lose a hole, but he can come back and birdie about five in a row. So um, love that. Love the hometown um, ties. Um, Fitzpatrick on day one, that's going to, I think, probably Huge decide match. this group. Huh? Side bet. Side bet. Huge match. I like it. I mm -hmm. like it. Um, <laughs> that I think the Fitzpatrick Spieth uh, matchup day one is going to decide the group. Um mm -hmm. Wolf is just in. I don't know what what's going on with him. Uh, I don't Withdrawn think he can. and missed cuts. Yeah, yeah. Connors, he should be. Connors should definitely take day one from him. Um, mm -hmm. So he he could be live. Um, Seventy eight hundred is fine. Uh, I might get exposure to a small exposure to Connors and Fitzpatrick, but I'm going to have a ton. I think to speak, which is going to naturally get me a lot different because that's going to make it where I don't have quite as bit to like JT and Kisner right. um, who people are really going to be heavy on. I'll still definitely have exposure to them, but I'm going to have a lot of Jordan speed this week. Pivots away from chalk at an event like this reminds me a little bit of like NASCAR uh, pivoting yeah. away from uh, drivers in high variance spots like say like the Daytona 500 or Talladega, anything that has high variance. I love making pivots off of chalk. Uh, you know, we talked about this in previous shows in the last couple of weeks, just looking at the, you know, the percentage of guys that finished top 10 who, you know, the chalk, sorry, the top 10 highest owned guys, there were six that missed the cut uh, two weeks ago. I, I don't have the numbers from last week in front of me, but the variance is very high at an event like this. We talked about that in the opening here. And that kind of takes us into group 16, the final group. I personally have 0% exposure at this point to anyone in this group. I don't really have a feel either way. I think DJ is the obvious chalk coming out of this whole thing. So there's probably going to be, you know, Sungjae is going to be very low owned. I think overall that's going to be a good pivot, I think, in that range. There's just tons of pivots in that mid 8K to low 9K range. I, I think that's, you know, a good strategy in itself. So I might do 220 maxes this week where I play out kind of the chalk situations that I really like. And then the second 20 max where I go and maybe fade the top five in chalk and pivot to other guys and kind of build up my brackets a little bit different that way. But is there anyone you're liking in this group 16? Um, uh, it's, it's a tough group for sure. I think Henley um, and Sungjae are my favorite two for sure. Um, not a, really a hot take. Maybe I'm a little heavier. Probably I'll be on Henley than I will be Sungjae. Um, that's just me. I don't have a strong lean though in this group at all. Yeah, Victor Perez, he's had a hot putter lately, 17th in the field in putting, but the ball striking just hasn't been that great. Last, uh, he played very well at the players, top 10. Uh, he could be a low owned guy, but again, he's kind of in a bad situation there. If he gets out of that group, he's then probably going to have to face Dustin Johnson or Kevin Nall. That would definitely help him there. If you got a Kevin Na, Victor Perez come out of there into the round of 16 in that quadrant, that would be just insane chalk. Absolutely burned lineups. <laughs> so uh, 
anything else in terms of strategy uh, or anything else you want to go over? I know the weather uh, was one thing I wanted to look at. I don't have that tab up here anymore, but I think it was looking pretty good, like five to 10 mile an hour. So that's not going to be an issue here at all. Um, but anything else you want to touch on? No, I think that's it for me. Um, main thing is just building the lineups the correct way. Um, hopefully we've drilled it in your head enough by, um, tomorrow night that we don't get questions about lineups that have <laughs> two in a group built the correct way because I'm going to do everything I can um, to make it to where you are have it in your head when you're building lineups to come to this tab and do exactly what we said in the first five to ten minutes of this video so um, I hope everybody at least listened to that part of the, of the video um, I think it's going to be a big week for us yeah uh, by far, you're going to have an edge just building around those simple rules over, say, 5 to 10% of the field. If you go look at the lineups that people are building on Wednesday morning, once everything locks and you go start breaking it down, there's going to be 5 to 10% that are building just completely wrong and have dead lineups before it even goes through. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, I mentioned one thing I did mention was going through here and building, or sorry, making copies of the bracket tab and then going through and building different scenarios. The cheat that you get from Roto Pros is view only. So what you're gonna to wanna to do if you have a copy of the sheet is go up to the top left. You're not gonna see that here in this picture, but at the top left, you click on file and you go down to make a copy. You click on that, name it whatever you want, and then it opens up another copy. That's gonna be editable. So then what I do is go down and right click on the bracket tab and just hit duplicate. And I'll do that like five times. And like I said, I'll just come through here and copy and paste, or you can write in names if you want and just build out these scenarios. Um, and then just start building your lineups from those scenarios that you built just to ensure, like we said, one more time, fifth time in the video, that you're building lineups correctly and making them at least optimal, no matter who you are targeting. You don't have to worry about the picks that we made. You can call us wrong in our picks here. You don't have to agree with anything we say there, but building your lineups, that's one thing we can all agree on. It's very important to do here this week and it can give us some edge. Thanks for joining me, Dane. That gets us right to about our hour here. Good discussion. Um, if you guys are just jumping in, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Uh, we have free trials going on right now for all of our memberships. And if you use promo code RP50, you'll get 50% off once that trial's up. Thanks for joining me. Have a good week, everyone. We'll meet you in chat and then in the winning picks on Sunday night. Good luck.